In this video, we're going to come back to the circuit we left off in the last video. We're going to make some slight modifications, but there's still quite a bit to talk about. So, the uh, light dependent resistor that you see here is not part of the circuit yet, and I haven't tied in the trim pot to uh, one end of the trim pot to the wiper yet, which is commonly used in case the wiper goes bad, you still have a fixed amount of resistance, 100 kilo ohms of resistance getting to the rest of the circuit. But in any case, let's review what this circuit is. Using this trim pot here, you can see that as I turn the trim pot counterclockwise, the servo here turns counterclockwise. If I turn it clockwise, the servo turns clockwise. It has 880 degrees of motion. That's its uh, full motion there. So now, this circuit, what we want to do is, so I went over this circuit in the last video. We're just making a couple of slight modifications. So first off, it's actually a good idea when you have a trim pot. I kind of avoided doing this last video because it's one more thing to have to remember. But it is actually a good idea to take the uh, floating end of the uh, trim pot and plug it in to where the output is, where the uh, wiper is. And that way, in case the wiper goes bad, you'll always have 100 kilo ohms of resistance. So if a trim pot's ever acting like it only has full resistance no matter where you turn it, that's probably why. So next thing is, we do want full resistance. So I'm gonna turn the uh, trim pot all the way away from the uh, positive rail there, there as you can see there and uh, from now on in this video we can make changes whenever we want of course but I'm gonna keep it at 100 kilo ohms so it's set all the way to the right and uh, there's also now a jumper all the way to the right over there so now we're gonna take the uh, trim pot or the uh, light dependent resistor as you can see we just put it parallel to the trim pot so the trim pots, we're going to look at this a little later, actually set our minimum amount of resistance. So now you can see, because of the light, the servo moved already. That's because of the light dependent resistor. As you can see, when I shade it, it moves uh, the other way. And uh, with my hand, I can get it to move all the way back. So now the position is determined by how much light is falling on here. Let me turn off. The overhead light there. Uh, that was a little too much. There you go. Let's go to the lowest setting. But as you can see, as I turn the uh, lamp away from the light dependent resistor, the uh, servo moves all the way to the left. And then I can get it to move with the higher setting all the way to the right. So it's just a quick, easy modification to get a practically a whole new circuit now it's a light dependent uh, circuit for the position of the servo so now before we move on let's get the electrical properties of the light dependent resistor because we really need to know that to understand what's going on with the circuit so this is an LCR meter it automatically measures the uh, inductance L the capacitance C and the resistance and it does that uh, automatically when you turn the uh, the power on. That's its default setting. There's other settings you can do. I don't do much with this meter though. I usually just use the uh, auto setting. But in any case, it can tell this is a resistor. That's in kilo ohms right there. So 2,628 ohms. And uh, if I turn the light away, as you can see the resistance is going up. So that's actually how we changed the servo. We changed the resistance of this light dependent resistor about 10 kilo ohms there now if I put my hand there you're gonna see we go up to the millions of ohms and it's actually gonna keep going up and uh, let's see uh, how high it goes if I don't move and get light on it so now we're 12 million ohms 12 mega ohms let's turn the light over a little bit more so 25 million ohms now it thinks it's a capacitor because as you know capacitors don't pass direct current they gain a charge on one side and a charge on the other side and then they become basically like infinite amount of resistance and uh, that's what we have here it can tell there's a charge across here but there's so much resistance 
that it actually thinks it's a capacitor. So, I don't know the maximum uh, resistance that measures, but uh, as you can see, we saw 25 million for uh, mega ohms for a brief period. Now I have a headlamp so that we can try to get this to as low of resistance as possible. Hopefully if I angle this it won't get uh, too blurry. And there you can see I can easily get down to around uh, 50 ohms of resistance if I point the light at it uh, carefully. So we have a very wide range of resistance to deal with and with the uh, trim pod as we'll look at later we set our maximum resistance but the light dependent resistor will set our minimum resistance as far as the rest of the circuit is concerned. And so from uh, now on we're going to be using math but uh, we're going to keep it simple as we saw we could get into the millions of ohms of resistance 5 million is uh, plenty for the math we're going to have to do so we're just going to use that number just keep in mind we can get a higher amount of resistance if we cover the light dependent resistor more and then on the lower end we're going to do a little math realize we can get even lower but uh, this is low enough one kilo ohm of resistance so it's pretty easy to get enough light on it with this lamp to get it to about one kilo ohm of resistance and that will give us the full range of movement for the servo that's the main thing but in any case here's the math formula we're going to look at when we look at the actual examples it'll be a little easier to uh, understand so in any case this is how you look at parallel resistors so that's what we got we got the trim pot and in parallel with it we have the light dependent resistor and the resistance of the trim pot determines is dependent on where the uh, wiper is but we have the wiper all the way over here for 100 kilo ohms and we're going to keep it there so to make the math easy we're just going to stick with 100 kilo ohms and so you take the reciprocal of each resistance so we got uh, that resistor there and that resistor there and we get these numbers and these numbers are actually in Siemens and that's actually how well it conducts a 100 kilo ohm resistor and obviously a 5 million ohm resistor they don't conduct very well but as you can see the 100 kilo ohm resistor conducts a lot better than the 5 million ohm resistor and uh, but then you add them up together so this is conducting a little bit better and uh, you got that conduction plus that conduction and then you get the reciprocal of that number to get back to resistance and as you can see that's just a tad bit below the 100 kilo ohms that's why when it is dark enough the servo is in the same position as when we turn the trim pot to uh, zero ohms of resistance I didn't mean to turn the light off but there you go when we turn the trim pot by itself all the way to the left that turned all the way to the left as you can see there now when it gets brighter we have the opposite so we take the reciprocal of each resistance we're just going to use 1000 ohms and there you can see that's a lot smaller number again it's in Siemens it's a lot smaller than that one it's conducting a lot better in fact it's conducting better than the 100 kilo ohm resistor they are both conducting though they both have current going through them and uh, so it's as if it's a smaller value resistor than uh, either of them and then so you add them together again this time it's the 100 kilo ohm resistor that's not conducting near as well but the one kilo ohm resistor is conducting pretty well and so ultimately you get close to about zero ohms it's a thousand here but compared to a hundred thousand you're you're almost at zero so that's why when it's really bright the light dependent resistor is conducting really well and uh, that's why the servo is in basically the same position as if without the light dependent resistor you just turn the trim pot to almost zero ohms of resistance so now hopefully that was clear but uh, in case it won't I'll explain it a little more with the uh, schematic here so as you can see we got uh, from the positive side of the power supply and the negatives down here 
but uh, there's two paths one through that resistor and then one through that resistor so we looked at two extremes when this was in the millions of ohms of resistance there's a whole lot of resistance here so a certain amount of currents gonna go through the uh, 100 kilo ohm uh, resistor in this case we use a trim pot but we could use a fixed resistor so a certain amount of currents going through a whole lot less currents coming through this way so almost all the currents coming from this resistor so this resistor is going to set the current so it's going to be about 100 kilo ohms with a little bit more current so a little bit more current is kind of like a little lower value resistor but still it's going to be close to 100 kilo ohms if this is massively larger now when we get the uh, light dependent resistor down close to zero ohms in relationship to 100 kilo ohms then a big flood of currents gonna flow through the resistor like that just a tiny trickle it's gonna come through here it's not gonna impact the amount of current flow the big rush is gonna be through here it's almost as this as if this resistor doesn't exist so if this is about zero ohms of resistance you have about zero equivalent ohms of resistance because that one's not really impacting the circuit so you're gonna hear that all the time it's really easy if parallel resistors have a wide uh, difference in resistance it's a little less than the lower value one because the higher value one is still adding a little bit of current so it's as if there's a little less resistance than a single resistor alone now let's say both of these were uh, 100 kilo ohms so you see this math all the time that's one reason why I didn't add it there but let's say this is 100 kilo ohms and that's 100 kilo ohms this uh, trim pot's going to set a certain amount of or let a certain amount of current pass through it based on its resistance and the rest of the circuit the same amount of current though is going to go through the light dependent resistor if it's set at a hundred kilo ohms so you'll have twice the current than if you had one by itself so twice the current is the same as half the resistance so if the light dependent resistor is a hundred kilo ohms we'll have as much current going through the yeah, two of them as if we had a single resistor of 50 kilo ohms. So you see that math all the time. I'm not going to go on that in this video. Just be aware.